Sharon, we're here today to look at the Toshiba machine that's been installed here, but before we do that, could you tell us a little bit about Tease Components and the company? Yeah, Tease Components is a machining subcontractor. We've been here for 50 years. Uh, we're in the northeast, about half an hour away from Middlesbrough, and uh, we subcontract machinists for a wide range of sectors, uh, particularly recently moving into the defence sector, um, and we manufacture different components from foundries, from fabricators, in a wide range of materials. You, you often do the work that others don't like or don't want, don't you? Is that a good analysis? Yeah, I think that we've, we took a decision some time ago that we had the machine tools, the measurement, the equipment um, and the skill set, most importantly, to be able to take on high-risk work um, and particularly complex components that were also very large and very heavy. Uh, what, what are the actual industries that you're making parts for that we might see here today on this Toshiba machine? Um, the parts on the Toshiba machine currently, um, there are mining components um, that we have on there. We also have some power generation components and, and typically our sort of background has been very much in power generation um, in the traditional sense, but more recently in renewables. And, and is it lower volumes of that type of work? Yeah, so I think um, a, a high volume order for us would be something like 5 to 10 in a batch. Uh, most of what we do is one-offs. Um, we, we, we don't see very much repeat work, so the investment decisions, um, the machine tools that we choose very much have to be about flexibility and adaptability for what we might need to machine in the future. Steve, fabulous machine we've got here. Um, how long has this Toshiba been here? It was commissioned the beginning of this year. And it looks like here in this, um, in this machine shop uh, you've got a lot of ongoing development, have you? There's been a lot of regeneration. We had uh, three old machines which were past the sell-by date, inaccurate, and we're in the process of renewing a lot of machines through the shop and updating. So if we'd have come in here maybe two years ago, we would have seen some manual boring machines, some milling machines, uh, doing the sort of job we've got here, but going from machine to machine. That's correct. So in buying this machine, obviously, we're saving a lot in setup charges, uh, and we've got a lot of uh, savings within setups. You, you've actually managed to get this machine as well in a sunken state. Tell us about the, the foundation here and why you've done that. That's all to do with the overhead crane. When the ram is up at its maximum, obviously the crane won't go over the top of it, so we've sunk the machine down to enable us to be able to do that. I also think from having looked at a few of these installations of these Toshiba machines, that it looks like it's, um, yeah, it's far more ergonomic and easy to access and set. Well, with everything being at floor level, obviously, yes, it's easy to get in, to stand on the chuck while you're setting jobs. Um, so, yes, it is uh, a oh, lot better. And with the Toshiba machines, obviously uh, supplied by Leader CNC, there's, there's quite a scope, quite a range of machines available. Why did you select the Tu 200? Is that, is that just down to the dimensions of the table? It is purely down to the overall size of the machine. If we went anything bigger, we would lose it on the height and we would have to sink too low. So this was the ideal machine to put in here. And the re machines it replaced, they were, it's, this is bigger than the two of those. And th this actual table size, does that then mean it's a two metre diameter? Is that what we've got? You've got a two metre diameter chuck, but you can swing 2.4 metres diameter. And would you ever get up to work that sort of size? I mean, I notice here that we've got, um, well, it's still not a small part on here, but do, do you get much bigger components than what we're machining here? We've already got up to the maximum that we can on the machine. Really? Okay, what are you making? What, what, for what industries and what sorts of parts? Well, the parts that we do in general are for many sectors. A lot of it's power generation. The job you see on the machine at the moment, that's part of a, a crushing machine. And the, the capabilities of the actual machine here as well, going back, as I said, a couple of years ago, you had milling machines doing the job of a, uh, a milling machine, uh, and then you obviously had turning machines doing turning and boring and so forth. Does this machine do all of those things in, in call it, one cell? It will do the majority of what you could do. It won't do everything, but it does the majority, so, and it does it a lot more accurate. And as well as the functionality of the machine, Steve, what, what options did you go for with it that can help you, uh, certainly when you're machining, uh, cast steels like this and also cast iron which I believe you do. We've got through coolant spindle on it and we've also got probing facilities on the machine. And what about getting the, because the machine is lower down, what about getting your the swarf out of, out of it? Where, did, where does it go? There is a conveyor at the side of the machine that takes it straight out into skips in the pit the far side. And talking about loading as well, I can imagine when that ram moves back and the door is fully open it, it, it is very accessible and easy to get to grips with. It is, yes. 
for a modern machine, the gardening is very straightforward to be able to access. And what about the, the Z on here as well? Do you have a W axis as well? So you've essentially uh, can take the RAM much higher. Well, we don't call it a W axis. We've got a bridge, which the bridge goes right up to the on the extent of the slides and then you've got your Z axis going up and down from there. So what would be the maximum height of part that you could get on here then? 1.5 metres under the tool. And what about the weight? How much weight could you put on that table? The maximum weight is 15 tonnes. And have you had anything on there anywhere near that? Very close. Right, OK. Uh, we spoke as well about the, the table and, the, and the, uh, the milling function. This table does have a C axis on it, 70, uh, 720 point indexing. Um, what does that mean, that it's moving to a position, it's locking, and then you can come in and do the milling? Or, to, or, or can it work as a, a kind of a simultaneous axis as well? It can do both. It can go to a locked off position for where you can do some milling, if you want to do straight keyways or something like that. Or it can be a live axis where if you were rotary milling, you can use your cross axis and your rotary table to combine. Um, I'd like to find out a little bit more about the Toshiba machine and why you went down that road. Uh, yeah, firstly, how did you find out about Toshiba and Leader CNC? Yeah, well, we, we identified that we had a requirement to be able to turn components between one and two metre diameter um, and also be able to mill and drill features on there as well in, in one set with live tooling. So we contacted a number of suppliers and we'd seen Toshiba's um, advertising through Leader in the Midlands. Um, we shortlisted down to three suppliers um, and ultimately we selected um, the two, two, 200 machine model. Um, the selection was largely due, due to the very compact design of that machine, so for the capacity that you get, it's actually a very small machine footprint, which is ideal for us because it leaves us more space for additional investments. And you've had to build a foundation as well, haven't you? I mean, how, how big is that pit where the machine goes? Well, we redesigned the foundation actually from Toshiba's recommendations um, and we worked with them on that so that we could end up with um, the chuck actually level with the floor which um, sort of worked for us in lots of different ways. Um, Toshiba have been to visit it and I think they've been pleased with the results uh, and they've fed that back to their own foundation designers. Oh good good and, and what about the cost of the machine? Uh, engineers that watch our channel they love, they love to know about solutions but they also like to know sort of not necessarily exactly how much they cost but whether they were competitive uh, compared to others. Uh, yeah, so um, this investment with um, foundation and tooling, we were looking at about half a million pounds investment. That's a big investment for a company like yours, isn't it? How quickly do you expect to get that back now you're reducing the amount of operations and doing things in, in uh, one set? Yeah, so the, the key thing with that machine is uh, its efficiency. Uh, obviously, it's a quicker machine, it's more accurate, so we can get more um, high margin work because we can achieve the tolerances. Um, and so we, we would look to get a payback on that really quite, quite quickly. Um, and it's also just about for us um, remaining competitive um, because we can meet those tolerances and we can um, make sure that we're efficient. And this was the first time you dealt with Leader CNC. Uh, you, you never quite know, do you? you place the order, you're thinking, is the machine going to come in when they say? Are they going to train us up uh, on the machine? How, how, how has that journey been? Yeah, so we've been really, really impressed with Leader. Um, the communication has been really good. Um, they worked with us on our foundation design. They, uh, when they said it was going to be installed and commissioned, um, they kept to their dates. And the after sales service and support and training has all been first class as well. So I wouldn't hesitate to recommend them. Yeah.